my friends, how are you? My name is Jay, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this week. I will give you full disclosure right now. It is Tuesday afternoon, but I will be heading to the mountains of North Carolina. I will be going to Asheville Thursday morning because I have a wedding for some dear friends um, that Friday, and we are just gonna make a long weekend out of it and enjoy ourselves. I'm hoping I'll get some reading done during that weekend. I will be bringing a stack of books with me as per usual, but I wanted to go ahead and get this vlog started because I've got a lot to do before Thursday to pack and get ready and stuff like that. Um, and I've got some news and some mail and packages for to share with you. Not that many, but I do have news. So on to the big stuff first. I will be undergoing a name change um to my channel not it's nothing too crazy nothing too intense i will still be doing the same content a little spook here a lot of books there um the new name for my channel will be cup of jay nice little pun on cup of joe um but i hope you enjoy the change uh like i said nothing new is nothing terribly new is going to happen um there will still be a sprinkle of spooks sprinkle of books and just a new name to go with it. I just wanted to start, I just wanted to get my name more generalized so that I could encompass my love of books and spooky things all under one umbrella, if that makes sense. I will get into it more in another video. I will be filming a formal announcement, a standalone video about this. Um, but yeah, I just, want, I just wanted to drop that real quick. Um, I, do you have some cool mail to show y'all? So I already opened it because I'm a bad booktuber. Like I don't understand. I don't, I'm terrible at waiting to open packages. So I got the Barnes and Nobles exclusive edition. I don't really know. It's, I don't think it's all that exclusive, but I got the exclusive edition of The Wicked King by Holly Black. So this is the second installment in her trilogy of the, um, and the first book is The Cruel Prince, if you didn't already know. Um, and it's basically about a main character named Jude who lives in the Fae world, and she's just trying to navigate the political intricacies of this world. It's very brutal, it's very intense, and there's a lot of cool stuff that's going on. I am a hardcore fan. I just read The Cruel Prince on audiobook a couple weeks ago, and I have never fell so hard for a fandom in my life save for like Harry Potter. Um, this just this series just captured my heart immediately, so I had to get The Wicked King, um, and I had to get this pretty exclusive edition because look how wonderful it is. I think the normal um, book is white, um, and also underneath, look at this pretty white book, and look at that sort of foiling. Is it like silver? I think it's green. I think there's like a tinge of, I can't tell in this light. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this book. I'm really excited to read it. I might pack this in my Asheville trip um, with me so I can switch between Nevernight. I'm hoping to finish Nevernight pretty quickly. Um, I don't have a book with me, but I do have the book sleeve. Um, I am about 240 pages in, which is a little over halfway. I'm hoping to get through a large dent tonight, aka Tuesday night. So we'll see, we'll see, and I'll update you later about it. Okay, my next bit of mail that I have, and this is actually my last bit of mail, um, but I'm really excited because it finally frickin' came. Um, I ordered some stickers. Uh, you know what? I ordered some stickers from a studio called Whimsical Cat Studio. When I placed the order, I realized it was all the way from Philippines, which, cool, Filipino pride. <laughs> um, but that was a pure, purely by accident. Um, so I'm gonna open this package. I already forgot what I freaking ordered because I ordered it like a month ago. Oh my God. This was the most intense envelope to open, which I appreciate because that means my stickers won't be damaged but I couldn't figure out how to freaking open it for a second. Oh, so cute. Okay, let's see. This is the first thing I see. Thank you for ordering. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, 
It's a little bend, but look at this little print. It's got a little cat and a little lion. I don't know where to put this, but I want to look at it every day. Maybe at my desk, actually, because this is like the one print that isn't weird and spooky or gory. It can be on my desk. Okay, so the first sticker sheet I got is this like, can you see it? Yeah, this little reader cat girl. She's super cute. She's reading and there's a little space right next to it to like scribble something on. It's really freaking cute. And then my next sticker sheet I got is this little girl here holding some hearts. Um, I didn't know what I actually wanted to do about that with this, but I figured if I really loved something, a book or whatever, I could stick it next to my um, bullet journal or agenda. Um, most of this is for like planning and bullet journaling, even though I haven't touched my bullet journal in weeks. Okay, and my next sticker pack is this little cat girl and there's like pumpkin spice lattes and little autumnal leaf pie leaf piles leaf piles can i talk today apparently not um she's so cute i love it all right my next pack is um this like spooky witch halloween pack can you see it there are witches i almost got um a harry potter sticker sheet but i decided i wanted halloween things because i'm a spooky bis all right my last but not least are these so i I guess when I bought these, I was really thinking I was going to do a lot of planning with these, which I will. I love using my planner. Um, this, if you can't see it, um, has like a girl with her hair in a top knot and it has like a camera for filming and taking pictures. I will probably use this to notate when I need to film. Um, so this is really freaking cute. I'm really excited to use this. Guys, I am pumped. I love them. I love them so much. So that's really all the mail that I have. Um, and I am going to be off to Asheville soon. But I will be taking you guys along with me as best as I can and as respectfully as I can because I do want to spend some quality time with my boyfriend. And I want to respect that without too much filming. Okay? Okay. But in the meanwhile... I'm gonna go read some things, yeah. Hey everyone, so I just wanted to um, provide a little update. So I'm in the middle right now of finishing Nevernight, but I did finish City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab, and or rather Victoria Schwab when she writes her middle grades. V.E. Schwab I think is the um, name that she uses for her adult novels, but I finished City of Ghosts and I absolutely adored it. It was amazing. It was spooky. It had lots of adventure and friendship and just like, I don't know. It was really cool. It's been a while since I've really fallen in love with a middle grade and that was it. That was the one. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. We're running the... Um, washer and dryer um because we're going to an, we're going on an adventure tomorrow we're going to Asheville but I wanted to hop on talk about City of Ghosts because it was excellent and then also I forgot to mention in my last couple of videos that a couple days ago probably the beginning of this week I finally finished Babysitter's Coven and I have a couple different thoughts about it I like it I'm gonna give it a solid like 3.5 out of 5 stars, um, but I'm probably going to save that for a future Witchology um, episode, which should be coming out in the next week or two. Um, I'm definitely due for another one. Oh my god, my cat is legit pawing my tripod. Don't do that. Don't. Um, also, I had um, one of y'all comment on a previous video um, about um, this board game, Mixtape Massacre. I showed a quick little blurb of us playing it was, it was like a fast forwarded track of us playing the game um in my previous blog my most recent um blog but it was super good it was super fun um 
And honestly, one of the biggest draws that I had to it was that it was pretty easy to understand after you went through the rules. Um, I'm still an idiot when it comes to rules and, and board games and really any games, to be honest. But um, Nick, my boyfriend, deciphered it pretty quickly and we got set up pretty easily. And honestly, the pieces to the board game were freaking phenomenal. So let me pull out a couple things. Um, so one of the things that you get to like put your little character on is um, this like little knife thing. And these holes are where you put your like little life pegs. So that's super cool. And then when you start to lose um, health or life or whatever, you just pop them out, put them aside. Um, so that's really cool. <laughs> So the action cards are actually these little VHS cards. They're super cool and they have like really cool graphics on the back. Um, and then you've got further action cards that um, look like cassette tapes. And what's really cool is that you can actually download their Spotify playlist to play while the board game is happening. And it's pretty decent. Um, honestly, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the most music literate person because I mostly listen to audiobooks and podcasts. Um, but I would say the playlist is decent. Um, the people I played with seem to recognize most of the songs. I did too. Um, here's another thing too. Let me just pull out some small pieces. Um, so you, the little pieces that move around the board, they all kind of look like this um, and like this. So they're really cute and you have little stands that you can put them on. Um, and then, let's see, I mean, that's like the brief overview. You do have character cards, and your character cards, they're very recognizable. They're very obviously a play on classic horror movie villains, such as Nightmare, which, hello, that's definitely Freddy Krueger. Um, Sarah, Samara. Um, so it's super cool. And then it also goes through like your different, your um, special ability, uh, your little history. And the object of the game is basically just to kill everyone or get as many kills or be the last one standing. It's pretty flexible. So you can play it a couple different ways. And I'm just going to pull out the board game. Um, so that's the board game. And then you place the little VHS cards on each area. So when you move around the board, you can um, flip over the card, do the action, etc. Um, I would say overall, if I had to give it out of five stars, I would say um, 3.75, maybe, maybe close to four, maybe a solid 3.75. I would say that it's a very fun game, um, very easy to play. It can take up to an hour. It can take as long as you want it to take, really. Um, we were a little tired, so it took a little longer than an hour, um, but it's super fun and I would recommend it. And I will leave the link below uh, if you decide you want to play it, but. Hopefully um, that answers your question um, for the person that commented, but I did want to talk about it. I never got to actually say anything about the board game, so super cool, definitely worth the money, definitely really fun to play with a group. Yeah. Anyway, now we're going to go back to reading. Hello! So I am in the car. We're heading to Asheville. Um, guys, I just finished Nevernight. Here it is, here is the book. Um, I don't have words. I genuinely don't have words. I actually literally don't have words because no one I know has read the book yet and I cannot spoil anything because it's amazing. It is the most epic thing I have ever read and I cannot talk to anyone about it. So here I am just silently stewing in how amazing this book is. Five out of five fucking stars. Jay Kristoff, you blow my fucking mind. Seriously, that was one of the best books I have ever read. When I started the book, it was kind of difficult in the first hundred pages, and I wasn't sure it would live up to all the hype that everyone gave it, and um, it did. It absolutely did. It was an absolute fucking masterpiece. Um, I'm gonna stop cursing now, um, but truly, if you like fantasy, if you like high fantasy, it is excellent. I will talk more about it later and wrap it up, but truly, I just...
just loved everything about this book. It was everything I've ever wanted in an adventure, in a fantasy novel. Bravo. I can't wait to get God's Grave, the second book. I I need it, like, ASAP. So, we're going to be in Asheville in about two hours. I will be visiting Malaprops, the, the bookstore in Asheville. Um, and if they have God's Grave, I will be getting it because this is the most amazing thing I've read in a long freaking time. In the meanwhile, I do have The Wicked King with me. I will probably start that later on. I will check in later. Good morning. It is Friday. Um, we woke up about an hour ago and I hope you can hear me over the roar of this river. It's beautiful out here, but also it's fucking noisy out here because um, we're right by the highway. So there are lots of like fucking trucks driving by. Um, and then I tried to film out here like two seconds ago and there is a train track over here. So a giant train was screeching to a halt. So I had to stop filming for a second. Um, it was astronomically noisy, but whatever. It is gorgeous. Um, the house is very quaint. Um, it is very chilly. It is uh, middle of October and we're in the mountains of North Carolina. I didn't think it'd be this cold because it's been relatively warm. This is crooked. Yeah. It's been relatively warm for the last couple of weeks, but it suddenly became fucking fall, fucking winter almost. But anyway, I wanted to update you. So I got a couple things, oop. <laughs> I got a couple things while we were out walking about in Asheville yesterday, right before we had to go to dinner. Um, and I found this book, The Tea Dragon Festival by Katie O'Neill. She has been made popular by the book, um, The Tea Dragon Society, and I did not see this book at Malaprops, the bookstore that I went to, but I found this and I was like, oh my God, this is a sign. I need this book. Um, I haven't heard anyone talk about the Tea Dragon Festival. It is so freaking sweet. I love it so much. I read it all in one sitting last night when we got home because I didn't want to delve right into the Wicked King immediately after reading Nevernight, after finishing Nevernight on the drive, but it was gorgeous. I mean, look at these little freaking dragons. They're so cute. I loved it so much. I, I, I'm sure that I will reread it over and over again just to look at the dragons. It was very sweet. I loved it a lot. Um, and it had lots of like lessons and just heartwarming, charming stuff. I, I enjoyed it. Um, well, then after I finished that, I went ahead and started The Wicked King. Um, I didn't get very far. I am currently uh, 10 pages in because I fell asleep on the couch last night because we were exhausted. We had been up since like, well, I had been up since six. We had been mostly on the road for like five hours of that day. And then we got to Asheville and went immediately to Ash downtown Asheville and explored a little. Um, and I got, I went to French Broad Chocolate Lounge and I got some little chocolates. Um, yeah, they're, they have a small selection of vegan items, so I had to go get some. Um, and I got some from my friend Irina because she loves chocolate. Um, and this is super random. I wanted to share this real quick before I dive into Nevernight. Um, and then I can get the heck out of this cold because it is cold. And I did not pack enough warm clothes for this weather because I didn't think it'd be this cold but I'm dumb and I should have just looked at the weather like a normal person who lives in 
2019. But we had to go to Trader Joe's right after dinner because we wanted to buy simple things for breakfast, oatmeal, fruit, a little, uh, couple nuts. Um, but I found this, um, the pumpkin spice biocellulose mask. So I think later we will try these. My boyfriend is actually, it took forever to get him to agree to a face mask. And when he finally did, he loved it. He loved how his skin felt. So I bought two um, to do a face mask with him. And then strangely enough, I found this rose water facial toner for like four bucks and it has great ingredients, nothing too crazy. Um, and I've been looking for some rose water facial toner. I don't do a lot with my face as you can see. I have nothing on right now. And when I film formally in my um, little library room for you guys, I do try to put on makeup, especially if I have a theme or something like that going on. But to be honest, my mainstay is a fair face and I wash my face at night because I thought when you left your teenage years, acne and skin problems were no longer a thing. But turns out adult acne is real and hormones happen. So I try to take care of my face. Honestly, I often forget, but I do like using toner um, after I wash my face. It's just like that little extra like cleansing bit. I don't actually understand toner all that often or all that much, um, but it helps my face and I use it every now and then. Um, so to backtrack, never night. I don't, the book is in the car, so otherwise I would hold it up. I don't even have the dust jacket. I did order God's Grave. I went to Malaprops thinking I need this fucking second book um, because yeah, I need it. It needs to happen. I need to know what's happening. Um, and I didn't find it Malaprops. I even asked the attendant and he said they were out of stock. So that's fine. I went ahead on Amazon, bought the book because I have a problem. But Nevernight was so excellent in so many ways. Like I've said multiple times in previous blogs, I don't, um, <laughs> boyfriend is looking at me through the window. He's like, why are you out there so long? Um, I had struggled in the first 100 pages. Right around 100 pages, sh shit gets real. Like, things start to happen, adventures start happening. I mean, adventures started the moment the book started, but it was just different once 100 pages passed. The footnotes slowed down after that, thank God, because I don't know that I, well, it still would have been a fantastic story with more footnotes, but I don't know that I would have read any of them. I did try to read a couple of them because I got a comment when I posted on the Owl Crate Facebook page um, that apparently it helps in some sort of plot device uh, in the later book, uh, in Dark Dawn. So I was like, okay, I'll just give it, I'll try and read them. Um, but Nevernight was so excellent for a couple reasons. Um, the School of Assassins was amazing. The, all the characters. Um, I called, I knew it. I called the twist at the end. I saw that coming um, I, after a little while. I, it took some time to figure out what was going on, but um, I just was so blown away by the characters, the development of the characters, uh, the weird bits of <laughs> sexy time yeah that's not a spoiler because it's really not that important but things happen and it was steamy like I'm not gonna lie I wasn't ready for that and I'm kind of like Jay Kristoff maybe you should write romance smut on your side job when you're not developing amazing high fantasy plots um but yeah and you know I think the biggest thing that really got me is that the main character, Mia Corbert, just, you just got to delve so deep into her psyche and into her development, and that's really important to me. I've said in my previous video about DNFing books, is that character development is the most important to me. I need to know that I, I need to feel like I know this character in and out and understand why they're doing certain things, and Jay Kristoff really did that. It was such a badass ending. The whole motherfucking book was a badass book. Um, and I'm excited to continue in this series. I've never felt this way about a book. I mean, I have. I have. But it's been a while. And I'm excited about it. So anyway, this is already way too long. I am going to go because it's fucking cold out here. And we are going to get started on our day. 
So I'll probably try and take you along. I think we're supposed to go to the Biltmore Gardens later. Uh, my boyfriend wants to fly his drone out here because it's gorgeous and the wither is, or the wither, the river is raging behind me. But I will see you guys in a little bit. Maybe I will have more books. Maybe I won't. Hopefully I do not because I don't need any more. Anyway, bye bye. Guys, it's like fucking pet cemetery out here. This fucking is the death road. There's this this road is so fucking loud. This is all I heard this morning. It's beautiful. But I'm pretty sure people would die just being near this road. Just that's cool. It's fine. How do I look? We're getting ready to go to the wedding that we came here for. We came to Asheville for a dear friend's wedding. I'm all dressed up. Um, I just wanted to check in really quickly because I passed by a used bookstore and I could not help but go in. We were actually driving by and I was like, babe, that's a bookstore. So he stopped like the good boyfriend that he is and I picked up these two things. Yeah, so I know, I know. Um, I already have paperback copies of Harry Potter, especially these particular editions. I have the ones that I got way back when I was like 10 years old or something like that. Um, but I do not have hardback covers and I really wanna rebuild my hardback editions of this series. So I bought them, they were $10 each. They, um, are in basically like perfect condition. The only thing that is happening is that, I don't know if you can see, but it's a little spotted, I think mostly from age and, you know, being a book. Um, but other than that, they're absolutely perfect. The spines are perfect. Like whoever had them, they couldn't have read them very much because my freaking editions are torn up. Like I have read them so much, I clutch them to my body, my young little middle school body so much that none of them look like this. So I'm really excited, $10 each wasn't even something that I had to think about. I grabbed it immediately. Anyway, we have to go really soon. My boyfriend's finishing getting ready um, and I, for miraculously, have managed to get ready under an hour. I normally am pretty low maintenance, but when it comes to special events, I get kind of nervous and anxious about it. So I try to take my time and really like actually look nice so I will check in with you later I'm hoping we can revisit Malaprops tomorrow but I have a feeling my boyfriend is going to be like what the fuck why do you need to go to these bookstores so much uh, he loves books too but I am a special breed um, so I will check in with you guys later see ya Good morning, loves. It is Saturday morning. It feels like I've been on vacation for like, I don't know, a week, but it's, I've been out of work or I've been on PTO um, since Thursday, really. Um, so we're heading back. I'm in the car right now. My boyfriend here is going, is taking a couple shots with his drone because this is our last little bit in Asheville. I have gotten a little further in The Wicked King. Look how pretty this edition is. This is the Barnes and Nobles exclusive um, and it's got a white um, book underneath and then of course the black um, dust cover. I really need all of them. 
needs to get a matching set. Um, but I am on chapter three of The Wicked King and it's going well so far. I really am enjoying reading the physical book because I listened to The Cruel Prince on audiobook, which was not a mistake. It was great and I really fell in love with the series through that audiobook. But there's just something so special about reading the physical books and I also get distracted less while I'm actually reading it. I've been in a mood lately where I love listening to my audiobooks but I can't seem to pay attention fully so I feel like I miss things. So I'm gonna read while he does his thing and then we're gonna head home and get to see our animals. We miss them so much. All right time to read. So I haven't, I've only read like a couple of pages, but can I just say that there's a, I feel like there are people who really love the Cruel Prince books. Um, and then there are people who really don't understand why anyone loves these books. Um, I really love Jude. A lot of people think that she's really unlikable. I think she's incredibly complex and ultimately human. And I think also because she's a human in the Fae world, um, I think that humanness is almost like elevated and turned up in volume so as to like specifically contrast with the fairies and I think people who like find her distasteful or like ridiculous or something they forget that they forget that probably Holly Black is actually using her humanness as a device to really you know make it more apparent that she's human in a fey world. Um, I also think she's kind of a badass. Like the amount of abuse she takes as like the character, I try, I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but the amount of abuse she takes in like the certain job that she ha does and just like the things that she goes through to reach the ends and the, and the goals that she has, I gotta appreciate the best. Like she's kind of a ruthless, cold, awesome badass. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Hey everyone. So we are back at the house. We have come back from Asheville. We actually came back yesterday around two o'clock um, and it is has been so good to be back. We missed the dogs and the cats terribly and we missed our own bed because let's be real. Like, I don't know what it is about getting older but I feel like the older I get, the less easy it becomes to sleep in a strange bed. Like it's just not ever the same. Um, anyway, Asheville was beautiful, uh, as you've probably already seen by now. Um, all those clips, or however many clips I ended up including, um, are actually done by my boyfriend Nick, and he is just a master drone filmer. If you ever need any um, drone footage, he's the one to contact. I'll include everything in the description below. But let's get back to the books. So when I left for Asheville, I brought a couple of books with me. Um, so I brought Nevernight, which is now sitting peacefully on my bookshelf because it has been read. I don't have it with me because I forgot to grab it. Um, but I also was going to read um, Clay Asherman's Spooky Basement. Did not get to it. Didn't even like crack it open the whole time I was there. I was too distracted by everything Asheville. And then I was also very distracted by Nevernight. Um, even everything I read after Nevernight, I was just still thinking and obsessing over how wonderful that book was, how amazing it was. Um, I also had brought the um, three and four of Saga. Didn't really touch this either. I think I cracked this open the morning of leaving for Asheville, but that's really about it. Um, didn't make it through. Um, but those are relatively easy reads. I have no worries that I'll get through it. Um, and what I did end up getting and reading, of course you saw earlier, was the Tea Dragon Festival, which was absolutely charming. I won't talk about it any further except that it was just freaking adorable and I can't wait to read it again. Um, and of course, as you saw earlier, I did get two copies of the Harry Potter series. Um, and I was looking at my bookshelf this morning and Turns out I actually have a full shelf 
that I can dedicate to Harry Potter. I was actually getting jealous of um, everyone who had full shelves dedicated to series that they love and nope. I, I now have one. I can now dedicate a full shelf. I'm still rebuilding my Harry Potter series because my mother sent them off to the Philippines when I left for college, which I can't blame her for wanting to share those wonderful books with it, but then still a little bitter about it because I love those books. Um, and they were my originals. But, um, so I just want to update you. So as I've said multiple times before, the Newt's Readathon is not going well. Um, technically, everything, most of what I've been reading is still part of the list. Um, when I discarded or DNF Sorcery of Thorns, I did replace it with Nevernight, which I finished and loved. And then um, I decided I wanted to jump on The Wicked King because Queen of Nothing is coming out in November. So I'm actually, I replaced The Wicked King with... Um, Instead of reading Cersei for the Newt's Readathon, I replaced it with The Wicked King. Um, and I'll go over this towards the end of October when I wrap up the Newt's Readathon, which will probably be a failure, but I'm still not giving up. I still have a couple books that I definitely want to try and get through, like The Bear and the Nightingale, um, and perhaps, oh yeah, um, And I Darken sequel, Now I Rise. Would love to get through that before October ends. And because I am the most distracted goof ever, I decided I wanted to get um, the Graveyard Book on audio, no, sorry, ebook. I, the Graveyard Book on ebook. And that's by Neil Gaiman. And, you know, I had borrowed it from the library and had kept it in my house for way too long. I definitely have late binds on those books. But, um, and then I saw recently on Alexandra Rosalind's ugh, Alexandra Rosalind's um, Spookathon videos that she read through the Graveyard book, absolutely loved it, and I was like, mm, I should give it a chance. But I already returned the books, very late, might I add. Um, and then I found it, the um, the ebook on Scribd, and I am now reading that and switching back and forth between The Wicked King and The Graveyard book. Um, I'm gonna see if I can substitute that for one of my other books. Um, so confession i refound reading after a long stint of not reading very much i read a lot when i was younger like middle school elementary school most of high school and then when i when i got into college i was a history major so i was doing a lot of academic reading which took the fun out of any sort of other reading um and then for years after college i could not get back into reading not substantially as, as much as i am now and so really in the last couple of like I would say three or four months, I really just refound reading in, in the way that I used to read in middle school and high school and elementary school. So embarking on a reading challenge was probably ambitious, not because I couldn't get through the books, but because there are so many books that I haven't read in the last like decade that I should have known better than to make myself super hyper focused. I think I will definitely um, try and you know, participate in the new Readathon next year when the timing is at, like when it's in real time, when it's supposed to be, I think if it's like in spring and then in like late summer. Um, but I'm going to get through as many of my lists as possible. I did do some swap outs as I just mentioned, but I'm going to get through as much as possible. I think I've read quite a bit, including audiobooks for the month of October and last half of September. So I'm pretty proud of myself and I've read some excellent things and I'll go over that in a later video. Um, but yeah, it's been nice coming back. The Wicked King is going incredibly well. Um, there's definitely a lot of political intrigue and intense stuff and I don't know if it's just like the adult in me nowadays. When I was a kid, I didn't quite understand all the political intrigue. It didn't quite mesh with how I viewed the world just yet. And I didn't necessarily enjoy it. And nowadays, even going into middle grade stuff where there's a little bit of political stuff, I thoroughly enjoy it. And The Wicked King is just filled with high stakes political intrigue in fairy, of course. So it's magical, it's fantastical, and it's everything I want. Um, in The Wicked King, I've actually, um, so I started it a little bit in Asheville, but I didn't really get a good start until we were leaving yesterday. Um, so I am now this much into it. I'm at 116 pages. It's not a very long book. It's about 330 pages. So that's exciting. I should get through this rather quickly. Um, and then the graveyard book, I think is also a little under 300 pages. So I feel like I should breeze through pretty quickly this week. Um, I'm not going to go on any further about all the books that happened in this um, vlog, but I do want to mention 
that, you know, as I've hinted before, there are changes coming to the channel. I'm going to reassure again that not a lot is going to change. I'm still going to have lots of book stuff, lots of spooky things. And um, I'm nervous about the change, but I think it's going to be a good thing. I think there's going to be more content coming onto my channel and my Instagram. If you're not following me, you should definitely check it out. Um, everything is linked below in the description. Um, but yeah, my upcoming name is going to be Cup of J play on Cup of Joe. Um, and I've got some wonderful new banner art that I'm going to share um, that my friend Casey did for me. She went with me to Monster Mania Con in my previous vlog. But it's it should be a great thing. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, there'll be lots of growth and excitement and community that I will get to be a part of. I'm really enjoying like watching booktube channels, making my own booktube videos, and just meeting people here and there and getting to discuss a lot of stuff about books um, and of course spooky things. Um, I am wearing my like Nightmare on Elm Street shirt um, because horror and spooky things are always going to be part of my life and books have always been a part of my life. Those two things have remained the most constant and I they're not disappearing from my channel anytime soon. Um, so just keep that in mind. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope you enjoyed traveling with me to the mountains of North Carolina in Asheville um, and you enjoyed all the footage that I put up. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a like, comment down below and subscribe and definitely hit that notification bell so you always know when I've got good things coming to you. See you later guys. Bye.